<coughs> All the participants are ready to please uh, turn off their mic. We are starting in next three minutes. We are starting in next one minute. All the participants are requested to please turn off their mic. Oh, 
मैथमेटिक्स greeting you all a very good morning and extending a warm welcome to this one day national webinar on teachers in digital times makers of a new education system at the outset i would like to extend my wholehearted warm teachers day wishes to all the teachers participating in this webinar today a very very happy teachers day my humble tributes to the great scholar educationist and former president of india Bharat Ratna Dr Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan on this teachers day now a brief introduction about our college st francis de sales college nagpur is a catholic christian minority institution managed by the catholic archdiocese of nagpur and its president is the archbishop of nagpur the college has been assessed and accredited with a grade with a cgpa of 3.23 by the national assessment and accreditation council bengaluru the institution is concerned with providing a holistic development to the students fostering self reliance and confidence the college welcomes students belonging to different caste and religion and caters and creates an ambience conducive to academics and value related ethical development the institution aims to inculcate a sense of responsibility devotion to duty and commitment to society in the students our faculty of highly qualified teachers well equipped library with modern facilities labs for research and spacious classrooms facilitate the technology enabled teaching and learning process in short sfs is a model institution where the students live in symbiotic relation amidst the motto of the college truth and love progressing academically towards building a better india today on this occasion of teachers day our college is organizing this one day national webinar on teachers in digital times makers of a new education system indeed this is one of the best way of celebrating teachers day we have two renowned resource persons amidst us today to enlighten us about the new education system so without taking much of time we will start the webinar now i would like to call upon father pravin disuza for introducing our bishop most reverend dr elias gonzalez over to you father thank you words of welcome uh, this is father pravin disuza heading the department of philosophy at st francis de sales college nagpur It is my pleasure to and privilege to introduce our Archbishop Binar. So, first of all, good morning, one and and a very happy Teachers' Day. Most Reverend Elias Gonzalez, Bishop of the Archdiocese of Nagpur, is the chair of SFS College Society. he has been taking great interest in motivating schools and our college particularly under his care to go online in the field of education. similarly social outreach programs spiritual activities etc have also been made accessible digitally in these pandemic times his grace 
was installed as the Metropolitan Archbishop of Nagpur in January 2019. He has charge of Catholic education in Western Asian Catholic Bishop Council comprising of Maharashtra, Gujarat and Goa. He was instrumental in forming Western Region Catholic Foundation for Education, WRCFE, registered company under Companies Act 2013. He is promoter of on the values online program for Western Region Catholic schools. In the words of Henry Adams, this affect eternity. No one can tell where the influence stops. Respected Archbishop has influenced the lives of many and continues to inspire us all with his multifaceted personality. His grace is a true shepherd, a true teacher. A hearty welcome to you, dear Archbishop Ji, on this auspicious occasion. We are eager to hear your gracious words as you inaugurate this webinar. Over to you, Archbishop. Good morning, everyone. I'm sure you, you are able to hear me clear and loud enough. I take this yeah, little more loud. I take this opportunity today at the very outset. I would like to congratulate all our teachers, all our eminent staff at SFS and all those other staff members, the ex-teachers, staff members who have joined today for this webinar. At the outset, I congratulate all of you. And I am very happy and glad. Today, we celebrate Mother Teresa's feast day where she was born to eternity on this special day. She is a teacher by profession, but by vocation, she became exemplary model and teacher of charity to the whole world. We do also celebrate today the Day of Charity, the International Day of Charity. And as teachers, You have been charitable all along your life. All of you, in a different ways and means, reach out to the students. In spite of all odds, challenges and difficulties, you become available to keep to your students, to all the and to the institutions, as well as different social, cultural, and linguistic events in our college. I thank you on behalf of management on this day and congratulate you for your services. It will be appropriate to celebrate festive day in your life and feel appreciated, loved, cared for. As the management stands by you at all times, we also felicitate you on this day for your immense service to the community at large, students coming from all strata of life, students coming from the poor and the rich background, students coming from different languages and cultural background, and yet you become one with them in a different ways and means. Teachers' Day, 
May God give you good health of body and mind to serve our community by giving education to the masses, to the youth, to the young minds. Today we are living the renaissance of technology and it has the power to transform teaching by ushering in a new model of connected teaching. Today, there needs to be an integration of technology in education to create a holistic learning experience for the students and also to procure a better learning outcome. Technology cannot be effective in the classroom until and unless the teachers are knowledgeable about the technology and its implementation to meet educational goals. It is now to be considered as the embedded part of the learning process. Technology takes us beyond the classroom and students and teachers are connected on a platform beyond geographical barriers. The learners of today are different and digital learning is the key to students' long-term success. My dear friends, the pandemic has brought forth a massive challenge in almost all the sectors. This is an unprecedented time and we, all the teachers, stood for the test of the time. This was something new venture to get in, a new path to walk in. And our teachers took up this challenge. This global crisis of coronavirus has been an extraordinary time for learning. Learning from the life situation that which created it. On the one hand, the tragedies, and on the other hand, opening new doors and windows for new situations. The situation had challenged the education system across the world and has forced educators to make a very big shift, shift to an online mode of teaching overnight. It has accelerated the pace of digital transformation and has changed student learning spaces from the typical brick and mortar classroom to a virtual classroom. We are learning to quickly adapt the re-imaging human connections and interactions to facilitate, to facilitate learning and transform into a new way of life. Our teaching and pedagogy to embrace a more inclusive and interactive style of have to empower the young minds and educate them to meet the needs of the future as the field of education is evolving at a fast pace. The role of a teacher must also adapt and grow. It is each teacher's responsibility to empower students to learn to be innovative, to be creative, to be giving space to learn from the present situation. Be well prepared as educators and researchers. My dear teachers, today's classroom is very different from the earlier ones, which we were used to for years and years. As the educational landscape evolves, we need to think and rethink on strategies and modules so as to make learning collaborative 
to create a link between the educator, learner, and the parents. There has to be a streamlined quality education preparing the students for the global world, for the global horizon that which offers us today ample opportunities in the modern world. In today's world of science and technology, education demands teachers to be more knowledgeable regarding ICT and the skills required to use ICT in the teaching learning process. Technology is transforming schools and colleges in a big way, in a different way, and challenging us and confronting us to the reality of life. By bringing in a new curriculum based on real world problems, the problems of environmental change, climate change, the wars and terrorism, the problems of unemployment of the young and the poverty. Projects which provide them with the know-how and that is where we need to venture in. Providing tools, tools for enhancing learning. How we can enhance this learning in our virtual class. The benefits of this new era of digital pedagogy have also resulted in a teachers being able to access a wealth of information during the pandemic lockdown when all learning spaces became inaccessible. We were shut in our homes, in the four walls, and education technology has become a lifeline for the continuation of learning from anywhere and any time. This paradigm shift from the traditional classroom to teaching online has brought about radical changes in the role and responsibility of teachers. In the present scenario, teachers are expected to navigate and initiate different teaching and engage the students successfully and lead them to highly quality pathways of learning. Education is student-centric, which centers on the needs, abilities, interest, and focuses on the learning styles of students. Learning. Students learn from multiple sources and for this reason, use of ICT and multimedia are very much essential in educational field and simultaneously teachers knowledge of ICT and multimedia are also required. I know it is difficult for some of you have to change your way of being a teacher virtually sitting before this two three inch screen three feet screen and just communicating to the screen in this digital era the teacher's role has shifted from mere provider of knowledge to a manager and mentor taking care of the students' academics, behavior, personal issues, etc. The teachers have to create a student-centered learning environment which endeavors for excellence and offers opportunities to, for dynamic learning. The present digital revolution has created a number of opportunities, but at the same time, put forth many challenges before us. 
we are slowly and steadily making a, a paradigm shift from the traditional way of learning to innovative methods of learning. Through traditional knowledge transmitters, the teachers has moved on to be a collaborator, facilitator, and creator of latest learning environment in order to survive and thrive in the world of digital literacy, where countless information and resources are available by a single click. I would say we are lucky generations. We just click and the Google gives you the whole world open for knowledge. Whatever you want, you can ask for. The teacher has his or her job cut out for him or her the thinking, but think critically, re become re reflective, and become creative in a scientific temper among the students in order to transform them. It is a vital function of techno savvy teachers to empower and enable themselves as well as the learners. As the students have transcended the four walls of classroom, the teacher's role has also expanded in an increasingly networked and connected world. Education is no longer limited to just deliver the curriculum. In a way, to keep the students actively engaged in a room, Active engagement and active learning has now become interactive learning. Both way, the traffic, not just one way traffic, but both the ways. With the advent of technology, the learning environment has now become flexible and dynamic. Learning is now a shared experience in the age of digital enlightenment. The teachers have the resources and knowledge to facilitate learning, bring about innovative changes, and at the same time, our role as the facilitators remain the same. Now is the time to reimagine education and achieve your goal of providing quality education by integrating technology into the existing curricula seamlessly for all the possibility of initiating technology enables learning. One will also face many challenges as we are, as we try to embrace the change. This sure that at times you will dead end of the road or dead wall. Don't want to do next, but surely our trials, our difficulties, our challenges will show us or open new ventures, new windows of knowledge. The qualification of new tools and applications and easy access to information, the teacher has to update in order to design and implement technology enable learning environments effectively. If we have to move ahead with times and works in the best possible way, for the benefit of our students, we have to understand how technology is transforming our teaching learning spaces. Education is no longer just about the delivery of curriculum in the traditional chalk and talk method. It is about using technology as the main driver for training students to be competent and competitive in the global digital world. My dear friends, in this global digital world, all of venture and make our best to be relevant in this modern world. If at all, 
all of us have to survive all of us have to be relevant and all of us have to be make ourselves progressing in the present world let us collaborate with each other let us help one another cooperate one another and make the best out of this pandemic beyond the dark tunnel there is always a light a light of hope a ray of hope and this pandemic is offering that ray of hope a transformed world to make a better world and my dear teachers you are that better world that which you can promise to your students on this day on this teachers day i wish you a very very happy teachers day once again and may god bless you and may god show you the way give you his wisdom and knowledge so that you may become effective instrument of god's plan of creation in this world and you make this world a better place for you and me and for all of us happy teachers day god bless you thank you very much yes thank you dear arch bishop ji for sharing your valuable insights so distinctly on the different roles that teachers to play while imparting quality education emphasized the role of technology in this era and how teachers need to take up this challenge of adapting themselves in the changing scenario you highlighted the student centric approach that we teachers and institutions must take up we assure you that we will heed to your invitation to becoming good teachers good schools and good colleges thank you your grace once again we continue to seek your blessings upon our institution and all others who are taking part in this webinar thank you thank you bishop ji now i hand over the proceedings to dr janardhan ma'am thank you father okay it's my pleasure to introduce dr mary serena mcconnell assistant professor department of zoology lady duke college madurai about the academics she did her msc in zoology from lady duke college madurai mphil in zoology from bharati dasan university tiruchirappalli doctorate in zoology from bharati dasan university tiruchirappalli now she has 18 years of work experience and has taught undergraduate postgraduate and mphil students she has served as assistant professor of zoology in st joseph's college tiruchirappalli st xavier's college palayam kottai bishop high heba college tiruchirappalli she has also served as principal at sarvai arts and science college for women t diyapatti kps college of arts and science kothagiri nilgiris currently she is working as assistant professor of zoology in lady duke college madurai she has undertaken many consultancy works to name a few reviewer of in india limited communication in english coaching for upsc apmt and neat coaching classes at various academies coaching for trb pgt examinations etc apart from doing research and teaching undergraduate and postgraduate students dr mcconnell has also been involved in mentoring and counseling remedial classes for slow learners 
curriculum designing, evaluation, publication, student progression, and community work. Her current research work is in the areas of environmental toxicology and biodiversity. And in the research front, she has published four research papers and presented four research papers. She has also attended a number of international, national, and state level workshops, seminars, and webinars. Dr. Mary McConnell has also created e-content of as many as 23 videos of puzzles, crosswords, and lab manuals in the YouTube channel titled Mary Serena McConnell. She has held various positions in Lady Doe College, like coordinator of UGC committee, member of IQSC, NCC, campus diversity, campus diversity committee, center for music and college choir. She is also a diploma holder in Bharatnatyam and Indian folk dances. So it is my great privilege to welcome such a versatile personality on behalf of SFS family to this one day national webinar. The participants who have queries can please post in the comment box. You can post it in the comment box, your queries at the end of her uh, talk, it will be addressed. Now I request Dr. Mary Serena McConnell to kindly deliver the talk. Over to you, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, and uh, on behalf of, uh, I think, not only me, am I, am I audible, please? Am I audible, please? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much to the organizers for having me over. And thank you to uh, the head of the institution and head of the department of my college for allowing me to be here. And uh, uh, I'd like to first share my screen with you before I continue. So a very good morning to you and a very, very, very happy Teacher's Day to each one of us. In our own right, uh, we have uh, all been teachers one way or the other to multiple number of uh, uh, students, colleagues, co-workers, friends. We teach everyone. Um, before I go further, uh, I'd like to just ask you one key question and I would hope you'd bear with me. I'd like you to go uh, to this website, www.menti.com and type in this particular code that you see on your screen and answer this question for me. Uh, why did you choose this profession? If you could very quickly do it, it will create a word cloud. All you have to do is open a browser and uh, type www.menti.com and use the code the number that you see on the screen. Great. Someone says passion. You can answer multiple number of uh, number of times. to inspire, great. I think we are more than 90 in the room. Let's make this interesting. So someone said to inspire, someone said passion, what else? Create great leaders. It's a noble profession. Yeah, you want to be a ladder. Great. Yes, to serve. Satisfaction. Yeah, to educate, to learn. Out of 91, only seven people are answering me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are teachers. We can give it an effort. Give it a go. 
the site is there on your screen please it says menti.com and you can use the code which is flashed there there's a number there okay only eight people have answered so how do i interpret this eight i'll just wait for just one more minute let's see if anyone else is interested in answering my question changes lives you serve yeah teachers my teachers inspired me okay it gives inner happiness satisfaction great i've got 12 people okay thank you so i'll stop sharing you can continue to answer and we'll look at it at the end of my uh, talk so i want to focus on the positives of the uh, topic that was here today uh, we are to talking about teachers in digital times and as a makers of new educational system so i know you'll hear rumblings you'll hear people coming up with all sorts of concepts now but i wanted to focus on the positive of things and as you all know education is the key to unlock a golden door of freedom so if we ever want to change the world then education is definitely a must it's in this context that i wanted you to play that game uh, on mentimeter uh, where i wanted to find out whether you really knew what inspired you to come to this profession because if we don't know us we don't know ourselves we can never go out and change the world we can never change anything for anyone because i believe change has to come from within okay so being educators our roles as the uh, honorable uh, lordship archbishop pointed out he i think he stole most of the uh, words from my mouth uh, and i'm hope i'm not repetitive but uh, we have had uh, numerous forms of education we have gone from uh, the olden uh, times where a gurukula system was there in this country it focused on vedic education the british came mekale we we love to blame mekale mekale and uh, you know his way of uh, transforming the classroom and this Uh, concept of the classroom has not changed for so long but now all of a sudden due to this pandemic we are being thrust into an unknown unseen uh, you know uh, uh, digital era but we need to realize that change is the law of life and those who look only to the past or to the present will definitely for certain miss the future as uh, john kennedy pointed out the former president of america change has to happen change has to happen change has to happen with us within if it doesn't start from us it's not going to affect anyone so let's answer this particular question what has changed the system the teacher is such or is it the student who has changed i would say it's a combination of all three that have changed let's look at it uh, from all three points of view and see how we can adapt to it and survive the way we meet has changed has it not we now meet our students so informally we have umpteen number of apps to go through it i'm sure all of you uh, in these two and a half uh, two years roughly have had problems with the students yes there are challenges the most common challenge i hear from most of my friends is that i can't see their face i'm so used to looking at the faces of my students i'm used to judging their reactions i'm used to uh, identifying their problems just by observing their body language this is second nature to all of us teachers uh, whether we are uh, teaching at a school level or at a college at level this is second nature of course uh, we miss that the second thing that uh, we all face especially those uh, who are uh, you know uh, middle order batsmen or higher in our teaching uh, profession is the technical challenges that are uh, available for us all of us are not tech savvy 
we have never thought that we would have come to this type of a classroom where you sit at home or you sit in a room with four walls around you and a screen in front of you the student i know many of us complain that the student doesn't even turn on her mic or a video but yet we still have to teach so yeah there are all sorts of gadgets and gizmos it is a thing but the most important thing that all of us feel we have lost is control i'm sure you'll agree with me with this we we feel we need to control the uh, classroom environment we need to control the way the student learns but we have lost it but i don't think it's so bleak yeah so we can have we can give them a set of instructions and those instructions can be enforced not 100% because yes there are technical challenges we live in a country where we have uh, rural students students who have no access to devices yes but we can do something about it you can ask them to switch on the videos it's not wrong um, i i don't promise that she's going to uh, uh, you know uh, do it but yes we can the interactive classroom has become a must we also need to trust the student to some extent which is very hard for us and we need as teachers to relinquish control so what i'm going to be talking about after this is all ways and means uh, which i have found practical in my teaching and i hope it serves you too as well innovation in the classroom uh, today it has instead of a teacher behind with a blackboard as you see me on my screen um, you find uh, this type of an image where uh, uh, you know it's a black screen with an image sometimes these children have uh, all sorts of pictures there they may have their own they may have uh, one of their uh, uh, cine idols uh, you know cartoons it goes on uh, you in fact i'm sure all of you will agree in the last 2 years uh, it's easier to ide identify the student by looking at And this uh, idol uh, the symbol and knowing who they are and their name than the face facial recognition has gone far we also for a very long time although we say we are uh, ict enabled teachers and uh, nac wants us to do more ict enabled teaching we have not explored beyond the boundary of a powerpoint presentation many of us are even unaware of the maximum things that can be done within a powerpoint presentation we stick to producing slides and even then we produce slides that have repetition of the words on it that's all maybe some of us may go for a few pictures but we don't go more than that yes there's also the easiest thing of going and picking up someone else's powerpoint presentation and just taking class with it that doesn't suffice or doesn't work now there are ways to make your powerpoint presentation more interesting there are so many gadgets as i started out by, i started out by using mentimeter mentimeter is a very good way to break ice in the class there are others also we can have blogs you can have uh, your own youtube channel you can have jamboard you can have a padlet you can have breakout rooms in your classroom now. now no matter what you can do mind mapping you can do anything that you did uh, you know within uh, the four walls of your classroom you can do it online now too if anyone is familiar with a bitmoji classroom this is my bitmoji classroom welcoming my students for the academic year so the way we deliver content also has changed the student is no longer sitting face to face with a notebook and a pen no rather we now have an lms a learning management system which is compulsory for everyone we may pay for it we may go for an open source uh, there are different uh, products available on the market and we keep using it but how has this changed for the teacher we definitely have to change the way we plan for classes we have to use a flipped classroom system uh we can no longer the onus is now on the student the student also is a equal um uh, should i say an equal partner along with the teacher if they want to complete learning if they want to do what they have to do so long we had a very passive way of giving them the teacher spoke the student uh, whether they invited 
or not uh, they wrote down notes you came to a date for an examination before the examination they sat down uh, and they you know just mugged up the entire notes what they could what they remembered they vomited onto a paper your questions were always direct questions to the point you used the what when how uh, what is this date what what happened here who is the father of this and you went on but that is not possible now uh, it should not be uh, the benchmark which which we stick by um yeah someone has raised their hand would you like me to stop or uh, i can answer the question in the end madam please continue uh, yeah. let me ask the question at the end okay thank you thank you so the next thing we need to do is we need to forget about finishing the syllabus that is not the uh, really important thing now uh, we need to introduce a lot of self study modules into our curriculum where the student we give the student the content we show them the way but they have to walk the walk we also have to learn and take the time to play with whatever lms we are using and we have to make it i'm sorry yeah we have to we have to make the lms our own otherwise it will not work so for a very long time this classroom interaction is what we thought about how will i go to class how will i present it how will i make my students learn what exactly are my students looking for but now with this digital era that's not possible we have to change the way we design our courses in indian in the indian education system especially the higher education system uh, in most of the arts and science streams uh, anyway uh, it is a problem because we don't design the syllabus you get a syllabus that is designed by someone else we don't know their thought processes many a time in colleges that are affiliated to the university you are following the university syllabus so when the university gives you a syllabus you don't know who set the syllabus with what thought process it was set it's just there and you just follow so that needs to change you need to design uh, course courses that you are an expert in and you need to have a thought process the same person who designed the syllabus should run the syllabus for at least a year because otherwise you are not going to uh, understand and know uh, where to change what to change once the syllabus has been introduced it's also good to run the syllabus as it is for at least 3 batches because otherwise you won't get a proper feedback and you won't know uh, you know how to do it most of us do it today we do it for the sake of nat nat wants us to change every 2 uh, years you need to change you add a line you subtract a line you introduce a new concept and you leave it at that we never never ever Uh, think how it affects the student or how it affects her later point uh, in life how does the student ever use this course that's something we never think of we also need to think about teaching methodologies pedagogy has to change yes we can't just come in and deliver a lecture that doesn't work anymore rather i would have this suggestion uh, we need to split uh, we need to split the ideas into ba basic concepts you need to tell the student what he or she needs to learn before class what will i be talking about during my class and you have to do some kind of reading or homework after class so what do i do before class any kind of concept that i realize is a basic concept for example this has been dealt with in school so i am only going to build on it so remember and recall should be there for uh, before class so student has to work that way we have to uh, do uh, the advanced concept or the uh, explaining of that whatever you want even the introduction to applications in class and uh, extra reading application oriented research papers everything have to come after class but some of us do it now but what we do we uh, we leave out something when it comes to the next part that is evaluation or assessment all these three phases have to be included into evaluation or assessment whichever one you decide that leads us to the next concept which is very relevant for today's digital era open resources open educational resource teachers need to let go of the concept of owning this particular thing see i we have a very i feel it's a bad habit um, forgive me if you uh, 
you know, you know, I beg to differ if you have your own opinion. But I feel teachers have a tendency of saying, see, I wrote this. I own this. This is the way I teach. This is the way it must be done. If anyone comes up with an idea and says, see, why can't we try something new? You say, no, 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 this is not the way it should be done. Rather, you know, I'm correct. This is how it is. That is not what uh, is needed for this particular uh, time. We need to have platforms where teachers share. I'm a zoologist. I would love to have a pan-India platform that says, hey, this is how I handle this particular paper. And these are the difficulties I face. Maybe someone can tell me, see, why don't you try it this way? I should be open enough to take that. They should be open enough to give me the idea. I should be open enough to accept that idea, not take it as it is. Acknowledge that person for the idea to anyone I meet. Say, see, I got this idea from Dr. So-and-so who had done this in their class. But I feel I can change it this way and use it in my class. So when someone else picks up, uh, you know, a concept from me, they will say the original idea belonged to Dr. So-and-so. It was modified by Dr. McConnell. And now I'm modifying it the other way. That is open resources. That amount of freedom we need to give to our ourselves. We need to be able to reuse. Yes, this is there in the West. But uh, here we have, uh, uh, you know, a uh, sadly, very sadly, we have a dog in the bone, uh, dog with a bone in a manger attitude over here. We really need to change that. We need to check. We are all gone into OBE now. But we need to check whether our course outcomes, our unit outcomes, and even our learning outcomes, whichever system you use, all fall into Bloom's taxonomy. I'm sure all of us are familiar with uh, uh, the older version of Bloom's taxonomy as well as the revised version. So we have to bring all of this under Bloom's taxonomy for the simple reason that it gives us a framework within which we can move. Um, it's not a common practice here in India for teachers of higher education to actually go and learn how to teach. You're taught along the way. All colleges have their own, uh, you know, beginning of the year activities where you have uh, relearning, freshers are taught uh, things, they go in for a, a, a three-day, five-day uh, workshop and you learn. Uh, it's only when you become a government staff that, uh, you know, you have to go for an orientation and so you go. These orientations are just uh, drops. Uh, you know, there are seeds that are sown and then left to grow by themselves. Whether we fertilize them and we uh, let them grow and become huge trees which are going to bear fruit is a big question altogether. But as far as uh, education at a primary level is, we insist on a degree which is a beard. Yes, so at least there something is uh, retained in their mind. Most schools today still ask the teachers to write notes of lessons. Uh, they write, they plan. We don't. The maximum planning we do is, oh, tomorrow I have a class. What do I talk about? Okay, I picked a random topic. I go there with whatever. Uh, I'm a science teacher. So uh, what we do is we usually you draw, use the chalk and talk and continue. Maximum ICT, as I've already said, is a PowerPoint. We don't plan. None of us. Uh, let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, maybe a minority may do it, but maximum we don't plan. We just go and we, uh, you know, I have the knowledge. I am the keeper of knowledge. What I give you, you take. Uh, if a student asks questions, we also have a habit of saying, um, Acha, sit down, that's enough, don't talk. I, uh, that's not uh, what we are speaking today. Or some very politely say, yeah, I'll refer and I'll get back to you. And then they forget about it. So we tend to discourage them as well. These are common practices. Let me give you an example of how I do it. So this is a paper I handle called Invertebrata. And usually uh, I split it unit wise, how many hours in a unit. And we have a CO or a course outcome for that unit. I further divide it into uh, umpteen number of topics, small breakable topics. I, I never go in more than an hour for a topic. I'd like to fix the knowledge level for that topic, whether I want them only to understand the concept, whether I want to go for higher application. I want the hots or the lots. I give the student three LOs per topic, three learning outcomes. If you do this topic, you will be able to one, two, three. At the end of whatever activities I've given you, these three should be reinforced. I also write out all this is done before the semester even begins. Uh, so the moment I'm allotted a paper, I this is my homework and it should be everyone's for that matter. 
I know what assessment I'm going to give, which day I'm going to give the assessment. I have a plan A and a plan B. Um, I know the level of the assessment, how much marks I'm going to have. Uh, I, I also know what material am I giving them. I want them to go to this particular book. Have I given them the e-book or is this? there a hard copy in the library which page are they going to read after reading what am i going to ask them to do now we have a system of continuous assessment that's why you see the cia one uh, written over there i also ensure that i give them materials offline i do give them homework so this is the way i go about it this leads us to the next question evaluation or assessment which one do you think is better Evaluation is more of uh, a closure, a finale. It's judgmental. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Praveen De Souza. Uh, it's applied against standards and it definitely shows shortfalls. Assessment, on the other hand, is ongoing, it's positive, it's individualized, and it will give you a feedback, not only for the student level, it will tell you whether you have taught or not. Unfortunately, we cannot get rid of this evaluation. We cannot do without it because our entire system in India is built on marks. The student has it drilled into their head right from uh, middle school onwards. Uh, I, I'm leaving out the primary because they have a lot of playway methods uh, which have been introduced. But unfortunately, from the middle uh, school education right up to higher secondary or junior college, the only thing we drill into them is marks. Yes, the system is so uh, pathetic that uh, even if there is an error in the textbook, the teacher knows it's an error, but they still ask the student to uh, vomit out the same thing in the exam. And unless it's the same thing, they don't get the marks. So students are driven by this. Parents give them equal amount of pressure. Peer adds to their pressure, all their peers. And so they are only mark-oriented, not anything else. When they come to college, it's, it's a... Uh, um, an uphill battle to get them to reignite their creativity and do anything creatively because it's so ingrained into them. So actually, I would suggest we, we can't get rid of evaluation. So we need to have a, a, a level playing field where we use both evaluation as well as assessment to uh, continue with this. We have to use uh, specific criteria, prefer rubrics over marks and we can go on. Uh, evidence driven should be also there gone are the days when we asked the student to sit down in a uh, room gave them a question paper put down answer sheets in front of them and ask them to write today assignments and assessment must be more on the terms of interaction teamwork uh, you even video assignments make your own video create synthesis level is what is a uh, you know uh, appreciated quiz levels uh, you can have case studies you have so many softwares also to help you with uh, all this you don't have to do it on your own there are enough and more software student seminars can also be uh, encouraged you can have interactive worksheets, you can have games, you can have simulation labs, and you can have infographics. So if this, uh, all, there are open resource available. Don't think that we need to pay for everything. There is so much of open resource available on the internet today. And if you have an, educa uh, you have an educator's uh, pass, that is, you have an institutional ID, uh, then with, if you log in with that email, you do get a lot of perks to use all these softwares. The paid version also exists. But uh, unfortunately, uh, as much as uh, we have been given the license to use all this, our beloved students have also learned to use two devices. This is another uh, complaint that I hear from many colleagues all over India. They say, see, what can we do? We are innovative, but the student copies. At one point of time, we would have asked the student to sit down and write, I must not copy. Now you have to drill it into their head that they have to avoid plagiarism. This is very easy. They simply go copy, paste and come and give it to you. So therefore, we have to have uh, plagiarism checks as well. Ultimate aim would be to stop plagiarism. Again, this comes in only because of insecurity from the student side and they want marks. Uh, as long as the onus is on marks, the students will go for this. So we have to somehow change that too as well. Bloom's taxonomy has also 
change to Bloom's digital taxonomy. And uh, now we have come to a, a, a state where we say if a student knows to use one type of application, if the student can use this application to do an assignment and give you something creative or and original in the end, then they have that level of uh, understanding and remembering. There are so many applications available and uh, it is now a widely accepted practice that if the student is able to do this, then yeah, they have achieved that. We need to understand that we will never ever go back to face-to-face -to -face teaching completely or online teaching completely again. It will be a hybrid and blended learning. We must accept this as teachers and plan accordingly. What we are giving our students are referred to as 21st century skills. The first set of skills, the first six, have already existed within our teaching framework and curriculum. But it is the second set, the competencies, that we really need to uh, focus on. When we were taught, when we went to the university or we went to college, we were taught for a job that already existed. We knew that we went to that position, you needed these skills and therefore in some form of the other it was given to you. Today, we are teaching students and preparing them for jobs that do not exist. Yes, uh, those jobs don't exist. You don't know what will be there in the future. Those uh, students who have passed out today, uh, it's not necessary that they are working in jobs where uh, they have actually studied for those jobs. That's not the way it is. I know of students who have done their PhD in botany but are sitting in a bank today. It's the job they got. They have to work, but they have taken the skills that they have learned during their PhD and used it there in the system. And believe me, he's doing quite well. And I'm really proud to have such a student who's able to adapt. So these are the skills that we really need to incorporate. The student doesn't need a course, uh, which is just giving them concepts. That's not what they uh, need today. We need to bring in all assignments and assessments that involve these four, uh, critical thinking, collaboration, communication and creativity. Uh, I would prefer if my student, you know, uh, made me uh, an album with pictures that spoke for themselves rather than sat down and gave me a 32 page uh, assignment, which he or she has just copied from some textbook word for word without even understanding why they are copying it. Yes. So I would prefer it that way. Therefore, I come to the concept that our 24th, uh, 21st century classroom has changed. The teacher is no longer just needed to stand behind uh, on a platform, on a raised platform with a blackboard and, you know, just go on rattoing away whatever we have learned long ago, uh, refreshed our memory, prepared class once again and come. That, that is not what we need today. Uh, open resources are available. Students, uh, as per our new education policy, the student can opt for MOOCs and anything outside also. Uh, 30, 30 to 40% is supposed to go that way. So it's changing. Uh, we need to change our way as well. The classroom now, uh, you know, is not going to be rows and rows of chairs in front of the uh, benches and chairs and students just sitting and writing uh, the entire physical atmosphere has to change the reason i'm pointing this out is many of us are opening up our institutions now and we are going back to college uh, and schools but you're not going to get the entire uh, you know 60 sitting in the classroom once again because there is still fear of the virus there is fear even if i've taken my vaccination there's hell of a lot going on uh, social media that says even if you've taken the vaccination you're falling sick and parents are worried about their children so it is their prerogative and their choice the educational institutions will not be in any position to force them to come and sit down on campus so we have to learn to uh, learn to uh, work with half the students on campus and half off. One of the worst things I have found uh, in my teaching experience is to have one student in front of you and the remaining 50 off online. Uh, what have come back? She will say, I'll rather stay at home. So we need to change. We need to develop our uh, courses that way also. Ultimately, it has now become a student-centered learning, not teacher-centered learning. The student has to be 99% involved in everything that happens. Uh, it's not that the student is 50%, teacher 50%. 90% has to be on the student. They have also developed many different styles of learning today. 
uh, we can't just say once to all uh, the the style i'm using will be used for everyone my student may be an auditory learner they may like to plug in and listen to my lecture and that will retain Uh, better another student may be a visual learner that student would like to have more images flashing another will say i like images but i like the videos better ma'am another says ma'am i need the videos but i don't want some other voice talking to me i want your voice that helps me better so you have to plan for all these things uh, we really have to multitask we really have to buckle up and you know change apart from this today teachers need to be mentors okay we really need to change we are not just teachers our portfolio has grown bigger and bigger we can no longer deliver a lecture evaluate and move on we need that connection with the student as well it's not an easy connection to make for all of us uh, i am not saying you need to go into their personal life but i am saying that you at least have a, a zone where the student feel come Uh, feels comfortable to tell you uh, everything that pertains to education at least if not anything else at least education we also have become teachers of values we were but now it is more simply because um, parents have thrust this responsibility on to us uh, they don't have the time and therefore they feel that the education system should give the students this too as well so we need to be able to tell them what values are we need to be able to show them what values are if i want to teach my student discipline then i should first stand manner before they enter yes this is something that every young teacher is taught when they come in but most of us leave it uh, along the road side as we continue uh, to go we need to force this into their brains by us uh, you know doing something we need to understand that what goes in today comes out tomorrow so what we teach them today uh, is what happens so far we've been talking along the lines of uh, the teacher but let's look at it the other way from the point of view of the student i have have you heard this saying students must maslow before they bloom are you familiar with maslow's hierarchy so the concept that talks about a hierarchy of needs in fact maslow's hierarchy was given way before bloom's bloom's came out only in the late 1940s but maslow's was there in the early 1940s 43 if i'm not mistaken are you familiar this this is very 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 important in light of the pandemic and the way uh, we can't do much about some of it but we can help Uh, it it helps us understand where the student is coming from so if you look at the uh, the lower part of the pyramid the most basic physiological needs whether they are having food uh, are they eating three times a day uh, are they eating healthy food are they drinking enough water do they sleep a lot today i get a lot of complaints from parents that say ma'am she is up till 12 o'clock in the night how will she get up the next day for class Yes I I had a friend a colleague tell me a couple of days ago that when she asked her students to switch on the video the reply was ma'am how do i switch on i'm not ready for class i i'm still in bed i'm listening to you but i'm still in bed yes so it may sound atrocious to us but this is reality for them you need to look at that side of it as well are they safe Uh, i know of students in uh, my department who were who were really brilliant uh, but in this pandemic has created uh, you know chaos in their lives and today they are they are uh, highly unstable they require regular counseling they need uh, you know some have even gone on to medication uh, it's a very pitiful sad thing and it it's hurting as a teacher when your students do that but unfortunately again the only thing we can do is pray for them give them support emotionally and you can help them out uh, maybe you know give them teach them at a slower pace something else but we need to know what they are going through because if they don't love themselves they don't know about their self esteem they don't know their self worth then whatever you are teaching here is not going to enter their brain i'm sure we've all had the experience the moment you're tired the moment you're hungry your brain switches off it's not going to take in whatever uh, the teacher is saying so we need to consider their side and their point of view as well 
I can want a lot of things for my students. I can want that they listen to me. I can want that they are very attentive and answer immediately. I want, I demand that they read more. I They must visualize more. They must be this. They must be that. This is all my wants and my needs as a teacher. Please remember, when you have high expectations, you will be greatly disappointed. So you have to learn to tamper down your expectations as well as a teacher. You must know who you are dealing with. We are not dealing with the other older generations. We are dealing with a generation Z or generation Z. Yes, they demand a fast response. They have a very short attention span, shorter than that of a goldfish. Yes, they are highly connected. They are influenced by their peers. They are all into social media. They want to be entertained even in the classroom. Uh, uh, they prefer visual format. They are more tech savvy than us. We have to accept this. Yes. So how do I change myself as a teacher to meet this type of, uh, uh, you know, these type of students? It does remain a fact that evolution has taught us that adaptation is the key to all survival. And believe me, teachers are adapted. We are, uh, we are fine-tuned to adapt. It may happen overnight, it may take a long time, but ultimately we do it in the end. That's how we have uh, survived. So therefore, there are needs of being a 21st century educator as well. We are someone who wears many caps already. We may be a wife, a mother, a teacher, a friend, a husband. Uh, yeah, Each of us wears so many caps. We need to add more to that. Uh, we need to be a relationship builders. We need to be a learner ourselves. We need to be highly inclusive. We need to be reflective. We need to be networked, as I said. We too need to be innovators. Uh, we, we need to be leaders in our own right. We must be able to tell a story. Otherwise, you will never captivate them. You must design, not just our costumes, but design your courses, your classrooms. We must be artists. We must be lifelong learners, which we are. I don't question it. We are. We go for refresher courses. We pick up so many things. But how many of us do it because of the passion we mentioned? How many of us do it because we want the students to appreciate us? How many of us do it because it is just another demand by the institution? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. We need to learn new technology. I understand that it is hard for someone who is used, you know, who, who's just used to a PowerPoint, it's very hard to go and learn. Believe me, there are so many that are user-friendly. There are user-friendly applications which we can use. Another rut which we tend to fall into is, I use this application, I like the way I use it, so I use the same application again and again. Doesn't work well with our students. This too, I'm saying by experience. You have to keep changing every uh, so often. Uh, if, if you're going for a, you know, this, the same class, if you are going semester after semester, uh, then uh, they learn your tricks. And believe me, their, their level of enthusiasm they showed in the first semester will not be there in the third. So they learn the tricks and they, they expect more from you. So you have to deliver. We have to let go of old habits. Uh, we have a way of saying, you know, uh, uh, talking around in our, uh, all of our staff rooms. Uh, you know, you say, ma'am, this classroom, this girl, uh, or this boy, this is what they did, then this happened. And most of us go in there with a prefixed idea that this particular child is meant uh, uh, to do only this. And this is the way this child is going to react to every teacher. This child cannot write. This child has this. So we need to get rid of those prefixed habits. The another habit we have is uh, whatever I say, the student will fall in line. Don't question me. That's another thing I, I mentioned before. Apart from this, we need to send strong messages. When the student, uh, if we are influenced by our peers, believe me, the student is influenced by their peers as well. Before a student comes to your class, the student knows A to Z about you, whatever their peers uh, as you seniors, juniors, whoever has told them everything, they know everything about you, what the others have, have said. You have now uh, the opportunity to break that mold. You have to break that mold, but send a strong message. I, for one, always believe that I am a strong disciplinarian. In my class, I expect students to do dash, 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 dash. I like to lay down the law the moment they come in. 
and i like to take an evaluation at the end of the class and ask them whether those rules in the beginning they will find my rules very hard to follow but at the end there will at least be a set of students that relent i feel that is success enough for me we have to learn to think out of the box too it's very very important if we can't think out of the box how do you expect the student to think out of the box think out of the box doesn't just mean um, you know coming up with innovational ideas about uh, my my course that that's not think out of the box as, well, as far as i'm concerned the way we do our questions let's stop asking why when what how if we ask the question justify so and so then we should have taught the students to justify yes so we need to uh, teach before we ask questions um, i don't know many of us must be doing it but this is what i felt these are a few of the concepts that we must change too we must change our concept of time many of us would have come to this job in an idea of it being in a nine to five job believe me it's not there anymore uh, it occupies 24 hours of, a, of the day and sometimes uh, uh, you get a complete break sometimes if you have to learn to schedule your time and time do time management all over again we have to break that concept management should reconsider the way workloads are allotted and given because so far a workload was only the contact and teaching hours now teachers are working outside those hours too because we have to produce e content um, i think research should also be brought into your workload because if you produce research papers you should be given time for it i am a strong believer that if you was under you to guide then that too accounts into your workload we management really needs to consider this too as well because you uh, even if you consider uh, you know um uh, teachers to be machines uh machines do break down believe me and uh, you need time to recoup reevaluate re and come back again we patient style or evaluation pattern unfortunately i may not be able to influence the whole system but i can hope that somewhere along the line it will what a student will be we need to change that idea too i think i explained uh, i spoke about that and lastly we must change our concept and idea of money uh i know of people who believe that they will use uh technology only if the management is going to buy it for them uh why should i do why should i spend my own um these concepts really need to change uh we need to be able yeah if i need it i need something about it and the management should help in some way uh maybe not 100% but yeah at least 10% why not that too can be a a uh, shift these are all minor paradigm shifts i'd like to end by just giving you a few uh, uh, thoughts that i consider to be uh, the rainbow of change a rainbow for teachers because teachers are the agents of change number 1 don't wait for superheroes to come and save the day no one's going to come let us realize that we are superheroes because we produce the superheroes of tomorrow we produce the teachers we produce the politicians we produce the uh, lawyers the doctors everyone has learned under a teacher at one point of time they cannot be any new job for which there is no teacher okay so we produce and we need to take the the opportunity to change ourselves thereby changing the entire uh, system per se don't expect polit policy makers to understand ground reality this is something we all do we love to sit down and complain about the way the system is this should believe me it's not reality uh, the system is totally either it's an utopian uh, you know something that should happen could happen or it is it is definitely out of touch with reality we cannot sit here and just complain it is high time we act if we leave this opportunity 10 years down the line we'll be doing the same thing sitting and complaining that's all the system will move on teachers will stay as we are they may even come up with a concept that uh, you know computers can replace teachers already there's a huge debate going around whether computers should replace teachers we need to understand that skills are more important than concepts i have a a paper with uh, eight units five units 10 units each one is so many hours i expect that the student understand concept 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 i say it's high time we reduce if they have learned something in school reinforce that concept some other way don't sit down with that same concept and work it out for one week where the student gets bored okay once boredom sets in it's very hard to bring them back on track 
we need to understand and change our ideas about losers and winners as far as i am concerned there are no losers all winners even if that student has an error don't degrade them they they would have who knows what was their problem at that point of time yes uh, who knows if you change the way the question is said all can be winners i'm not saying lower the benchmarks or lower the standards i'm all for keeping them high i believe in merit but i believe that even those who we term slow learners can be made into high achievers if we do something about it i know of uh, uh, you know in sinjal's college i know of uh, teachers who used to buy the student lunch and tea and retain them back in the afternoon just to sit down for remedial class because we knew that that student was coming from a poor family was not given any scholarship anywhere and therefore uh, you know was all waiting to run run out to go and do jobs but the moment the teacher you know bought him uh, something as simple as a tea and a biscuit or one day they bought them lunch i uh, hats off to that sir he's still there uh, the the student changed the student learned yes so this is the type of change that we we need to bring about when i spoke about maslow's needs what i meant was uh, once we know the student then all schools uh, all of our colleges of for scholarships they offer free noon meals they all of us do so many things for the student but we the teacher as a mentor should be able to be the bridge between the management and the student it should benefit that student it is better that student uh, even if they don't re uh, retain what you spoke in class about your uh, particular theory paper or uh, whatever happened in your lab 20 years down the line that student will remember that you fed them yes that you paved the way for them to for their brain to actually work i feel that is more important yes, uh, i i spoke about this in the beginning and i am just re reiterating it at the end that sharing knowledge is very crucial and you need to be able to accept others uh, you know uh, explanations as well faith passion discipline and dedication are the only four things that you need to uh, continue being a teacher irrespective of whether we go back to online or face to face or what if you identify yourself as a teacher then these are the only four thing things in the mentimeter thing that i put up first but uh, personally you must have faith in yourself faith in the system faith in your students otherwise uh, it won't work you need passion because there will be challenges there are challenges sometimes it seems like you cannot cross that challenge but if you don't have passion it's not going to work you will automatically come to a conclusion what the hell let me drop it let me go that's not what a teacher stands for we need discipline among ourselves i believe if i am not disciplined if i don't practice it i will not preach it this is a, a my personal motto if i am not able to use something i don't tell my students to do yes uh, that's how they learn that's how they respect us and of course dedication you should not give up don't give up on any student uh, i personally find many students don't come and talk to me because they think that uh, you know madam is very strict madam is like this but those who do cross that barrier and come they benefit in their own ways and they always remain i'm really proud when i say that uh, i have a student who's done their phd here they are working in mexico they are in london they have gone to oxford it is a pride for the teacher but believe me the student must surpass the teacher we must accept that too as well i thought yes but my student has to surpass me and go further than me that is a privilege which i would like finally at the end of the rainbow let god be your guide if you don't believe in your religion in your faith we can't transfer anything to our students i believe that to teach is to th thank you for your patient listening and uh, this is my i am open to questions thank you so much that was really a wonderful brilliant and brainstorming talk exploring many online platforms visions and ideas of teachers role in a newly education in a new education system some of our viewers have queries which will be answered through email and okay. thank you so much dr mary mcconnell 
for your gracious presence thank you and for thank delivering you for inviting me for delivering such a wonderful and brainstorming talk today thank you once again thank, thank you ma'am thank you so much to the organizers as well happy teachers day once again yes. now over to biju for the proceeding Sadanka sir, shall we take shall we take a few questions? Ah, uh, Biju is going to. Yes, ma'am. You can take. You can take. Few questions we can take. Ma'am, we have ah uh, one query that is there yes. that is in the perspective of students. Yeah. And that is that okay? It is about the uh, teachers. Okay, how to be makers of new education system, takers of new education system. That's a real challenge for teachers. now we are facing yes ma'am uh, yes it's very hard uh, to train the students but uh, believe me it requires only patience it's our outlook that matters uh, as i said don't wait for the uh, you know people to understand ground reality what we can do we can on a small scale as i said students uh, sometimes don't feel free to come and talk early simply because i always insist that uh, you know you need to be disciplined you need to do this on time if you don't submit your assignment on time i will yell after some time when they really break that barrier and it takes time it takes time uh, it's like uh, you know drops of water falling down on a rock at one point of time the rock will break why it doesn't work is when only one teacher does it when the entire college the entire department does it then believe me change will be quicker when only one drop is falling it will take time so you can believe me they are more versatile than us students are much more versatile than us they they can uh, they treat each teacher different also they know which teacher will stick to what principles oh they are great in all that they will identify all that before us ma'am that's right but um... are you uh, giving any training for this online platforms to your students there are many available yes we do it in lady dog college the moment they come in yes they have uh, i personally before in, before introducing any kind of new tool will give them a session on it i'll uh, do a demo video and give them the video they can look at the video any number of times before they uh, identify they are taught to use it without teaching it won't work ma'am and that's why because they want various platforms means they should be first uh, yeah, yeah, familiar yeah. with all i think the rest of the questions can be answered through email yeah sure ma'am thank you very much ma'am over to biju uh, dear participants uh, due to some important work uh, the second resource person is not available i think in future we can have an uh, uh, talk with the uh, uh, professor shaina anthony uh, i like to conclude today's session with a lot of thanks Uh, I I'd like to thank uh, His Grace Archbishop Elias Gonzalez, a uh, chairman of Esopus College. Uh, His Grace is leading post post our our institution. On behalf of the college, His Grace, I would like to thank you for sparing valuable time with us. Thank you, Archbishop. And I also thank Dr. Kathy Thomas, sir, for always being supportive and motivated to conduct such kind of program. Uh, thank you, sir, for your constant support. I also thank today's speaker. Uh, I also thank uh, Sujada Manam, Sujada Janabin Ma'am for organizing this program. I also thank Father Praveen to give us support to this program. I also thank the technical team, Dr. Dilip Sadankar, Ms. Vidika Vanchari, Ms. Pragadi, Ms. Pinky Gidwani, Ms. Reshma Kosi. This team made the event possible and executed the program very smoothly and efficiently. With Without your support, this program will not be happen. I am thankful to the energy. I also thank the participants. Without your active participation, in this program could not be imagined to take place. I thank for your attention and patience for listening in this entire program. Once again, 
I thank all of you to make this program a great success. Thank you all. Now I request all the participants to stand for the uh, honor of national anthem. Thank you. Um, thank you, ma'am. May I leave? Yes, ma'am, you can leave. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.